Hey CGBDs, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm gonna show you why using Gaia for your foreground is a good idea and why you should do it. When you start to scatter grass, rocks, and pebbles, everything you want to scatter, it's gonna bring way more detail into your scene. For example, this. All of those details that you have here, here, even those talus that you have here, they're gonna translate into your environment, into your lightning, because if your lightning comes from here, all of the tip here is gonna be like illuminated of your grass and everything here is gonna be in the shadow. You start to see some shadowing here. You start to see some shadowing here. Everything is in the light here on top, light here. You have some shadowing here. But you see what is very cool? It's all of this here. You have all of those elevations going here. You can really feel heat here. And this is what's gonna bring your scene to a next level, believe me. I'm gonna show you two options. The first one is gonna be basically create your own terrain using Gaia from a blank stage. But the second option might be something that might interest you. Exporting your first pass of the foreground layout into Gaia and from Gaia start to add some sculpting detail and import it back to your scene. So first, what is Gaia? I'm speaking for the people that really don't know this kind of software. There is Gaia, World Machine back in the day. There is World Creator and there is Houdini. One of the coolest things about Gaia is the intuitive interface. Um, even if you're a seasoned 3D artist or just a newbie, you can create something. It's very, very easy. So first and foremost, what you want to do is start from a layout. Always start from a layout because it's going to help you build your scene. For the winter cabin, what I wanted to start with, it was a noise. The one that's gonna interest me in that case is gonna be the clamp. Because remember, I want something a little bit more flat than what it is right now. So I'm gonna add what we called a rugged. What it does is gonna add some cracks. Some modifier you have to apply them to see the changes. And the seed, as usual, let's play with the seeds. Next one. I'm gonna add, it's called the Reset, which is basically some sort of erosion. And here what you want to do is basically, I wanted some sand. And now what you can do is add an erosion. Now that we have some sort of basic terrain almost, you want to go to 1K. And you see I'm already having way more detail now. There is another modifier that I'm gonna show you right now. It's called the stack that I use a lot. This is something very cool if you want to have more rock formation. But let's here let's remove this one for now. <coughs> I'm not gonna need it. Now what you can do, you can create a clamp, but I don't recommend this one. I'm gonna explain why that we lose a bunch of detail, because of course it's a clamp. Instead, I'm keeping it like this, and I'm gonna export this, this one. And this one, I'm gonna scale it down, ZY, um, into your 3D app, whatever it's Blender, Maya, Max, whatever you're using. Thank you. 
from there, now that we generated the terrain, you want to import it to the scene. So the goal here is basically to match the terrain that we have. So this is option two. This one is actually very cool because Gaia did something amazing. It's basically bring your OBJ into Gaia and then from Gaia, when you're happy with the OBJ that you just imported, just start to sculpt. Just start to add like erosion, start to add everything you need to. So this is something that can be very cool. So now that we exported our terrain, OBJ to eight field. Read the OBJ we just created, open a new a new windows with the terrain we just exported. And you know what? Let's do something very quick first, because I really want to show you guys. Let's pretend this is something you guys have to match. Okay. So this is the terrain we just created from the layout. It's work exactly like every app you can move. R is scale. I think E is rotation and W is moving. You just capture, successful, return to Gaia. Sometime this stuff happened, it's very easy. We're gonna do a transform and I'm gonna move this one. I think it's X position, yes. That's good. So we have the created a terrain generated from the layout. I can go back and just plug it hit here and I can even add way more detail. So usually what can happen is some people, let's do a blur, you're gonna understand. Some people have a terrain like this from the layout. This one I realize is a bit more detail, but it's okay, don't worry. What you might have on your side, it's something like this. But it doesn't matter because at the end we plug it here Now you have a ground that completely match your layout. And to prove that to you, I'm just gonna export it. You should be able to move them here. Yeah, you see, it's almost a match. It's not gonna be a 100% match, but it's gonna be very close to it, as you can see. And it's basically based on the layout. If my layout was something like very minimal, and you can see the difference. Yeah, I have way more detail and scattering stuff on this is very, very fun. And on top of that, if you want to texture, like I said, use the RGB mask and a golden. So there you have it. You just got a brief overview of ground sculpting and how I do it in like 90% of my cases. Either you're a game developer, content creator or digital artist, I feel Gaia is a must have. If you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments. I'm always happy to answer everything you ask for, if you have like some blockage or whatever. And even if you have ideas of me, if you want to do other videos. Also, now that you have your terrain and if you want to have some grudge, stick to the channel because the next video is going to pop somewhere. It's about creating grass using speed tree. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching and happy terraforming. See ya.